we it's okay speak your truth brother we um <laughs> we smoked a lot of weed there were a lot of women that came in and out of the house um and in college it wasn't no different i pledged a fraternity back in college and it was the same kind of lifestyle just like on a smaller scale i guess actually probably larger scale Hi everyone and welcome to Roads to Forever. I'm Terry, and in this video, I'm behind the camera as we have a candid conversation with young adult Christians about sex, dating, alcohol, marijuana, and faith. So if these are questions that you've been racking your mind about or wondering about as a young adult Christian, make sure you stick around and watch this video to the end. I promise you this content is fire. So let's dive right into it. What does it mean to be a Christian to each of you? Um, well, for me, it, I think it's like a holistic thing where it's first you have an encounter with Christ and then your encounter with Christ kind of plays a role in everything else that you do. From how you interact with people at work, in school, um, even from exercise, like just maintaining your body, I feel like at least for me, like the things I've been learning in the last couple of months, last six months or so, is that it really has to be holistic. So you start with like, God's trying to reach you and convict you on things, but he's also trying to make sure that that conviction goes into all these other areas of my life. So for me, um, I, yes, I claim to be a Christian, but I think for me, religion is relationship. Um, as I come across, different people from different walks of life, they all have a relationship with something. Whether they're atheists and they have a relationship with science or they have a relationship with reason. I've had conversations with someone who were Buddhist, so they have a relationship to, to that um, way of living life. And so for me, it's a relationship to God it, through the Christian lens. Um, and it permeates, kind of like Shelby was saying, permeates every aspect of my life. Um, so the way I think, what I wear, how I eat, it's, it's not just like, oh, what I do once a week, but what I do 24 seven. I like that. Uh, I think what you said about relationship was key for me. I think it has to deal with that the most where you start out saying, okay, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm gone. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Then you realize that being a Christian is difficult because the world fights against that every step of the way. So I think for me, it's what it means to be one is you have to be ready to take on that journey for the rest of your life because you're never going to be a perfect one. It's not possible, but you're always going to be in the more you are intimate with Christ, the more he'll show you the parts of yourself that you have to get out of you. So whether it be selfishness, whether it be whatever it looks like, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to spend time with him, no matter how long it takes. So if that's an hour in the morning, if you end up for myself, I, sometimes I end up being late for work late for work because I'm because I'm because I'm praying too much, if that makes sense, where you just, you get so involved in the spirit where you're like, all right, I want to stay here because I know what you're feeding me. And it's hard to leave that conversation when you're getting so much. So it's a continuous journey of figuring out who you are in Christ and getting rid of the old you, you know, and that process is difficult because of the type of friends you made in your old lifestyle, quote unquote, or you're transitioning from an old lifestyle to a new one, or once you're in the new one, constantly being reminded of your old one through interactions or right. old habits that come out of nowhere or temptations or whatever. So it's 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 a it's a it's a lifelong journey that involves a lot of intimacy and vulnerability with God. What's the hardest part of being a Christian and being a young adult? I think for me the hardest thing is to how do I want to say this? I think the hardest thing is to realize that the vast majority of my peers are not going to find the same level of importance that I find in faith and religion. I think a lot of my a lot of my friends believe in God. A lot of my friends believe that there's like a heaven or a hell, but do any of them really believe? Obviously some of them do, but the majority of them, especially who are not Christians, they don't really take the Bible as like serious it's just kind of something that you read because you feel like it but i could read the quran i could read uh the bhagavad gita i could read something from nietzsche like i can read all these things and glean something and so to
to say like yeah that's cool but that's not complete truth that's like that's really being an outlier um i think the most difficult part kind of like what Warren was saying in regards to dealing with the fact that your friends and your circle don't take it as seriously. Facts. You find yourself, well, I'm going to say you. I find, <laughs> my, I find myself when I, even at work sometimes, where, where my friends, like, they may say something, you're just like, I don't agree with that. And it's like, do I just not say anything and, like, let it go? But it's like, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere in the Bible it talks about if you let some somebody say something that disre- that doesn't agree with Christ in your presence and you don't say anything, it's like you're doing the same thing or saying the same thing. Could be maybe saying it wrong. So if it's wrong, sorry. But um, that's the impression I have of that. And so like when I hear people say certain things or comment about lifestyles like that I used to be a part of, you know, it's like, do you help them? Quote unquote help? Because it's, it's pointing something out to somebody, helping them, or is that just... You know, being a, I don't know what the word is. Um, what's the word of somebody who's trying to like, just like make you feel some kind of way at some moment? Um, I guess like judgmental. Judgmental, there we go. So the hardest part is to, is to is to balance that. Like, do I, do I make it important to my friends? Can I do that? Or do I just live my own life isolated from everybody else and try to find the community that agrees with what I want or what I, now am very invested in so it's like how do i transition out of maintaining the same friends without insulting them but then incorporating new ones without bringing them to the oh i'm trying to i can't no that's that's a real thing because for me that was a challenge like when i was not in the church Mm -hmm. i had a whole bunch of friends who were reckless Mm -hmm. and then when i got converted i came back to the church and i left all them friends behind But it was just because I didn't really, like, I was I was young, and so I was, yeah. like, 25, and I didn't really know, nobody really taught me how do you, like, reconcile that? Mm-hmm. How do you reconcile, like, your old life mm-hmm. with your new life in right. Christ? And so for me, like, the easiest way to do that would just be like, uh, <laughs> I just oh, don't yeah, know none of y'all. Yeah. What do you but think? Well, it's right. crazy. What do you think? Um... Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me, I think you mentioned, like, the importance of, like, community. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I guess, being much younger, I'm 24, so I'm in a different kind of sphere of life where I'm just out of college. Um, and a lot of my friends, I went to an Adventist college, a Christian college, and so most of my friends that I have, the people that I stick closest to are people that also share similar beliefs. Um, so I don't really, you know, people that don't share my beliefs anymore, I kind of stopped being friends with them in high school, and that wasn't because I didn't want to be their friend. It just, there was already kind of a disconnect even when I was in school anyway, so they kind of, in their own minds, I guess, shifted from like, okay, like, well, I'm, I recognize I'm, kind of my priorities are somewhere else anyway, even if it's not all related to just spirituality, just kind of where I see myself going, and for them it's in a, way it's in a um, direction that I I can't relate to or I, I don't find like purposeful for my own life but for me now um, I think just the whole question that you brought up about like is it hard to be a Christian and like a young adult like how do you kind of balance the two like I'm I'm figuring it out and I guess that's the point of this conversation like we're all figuring out in different ways for me I'm trying to figure out, well, how do I have a community now? I don't have those friends with me in person anymore, and that's tough. That's hard for me to have that, um, like, sense of accountability. As I'm learning and growing and, like, taking my relationship with God more seriously, like, I have my sister, um, who I can talk to. (laughs) Just kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we are. Um, But that's really that's about it and as I'll still like communicate with my friends but there's something for me like I I like quality time with people and I can do that over text or on the phone but I I like one-on-one conversations so not having people I can be real with like yeah like post-grad has been tough on me like just mostly like adjusting to not having people that used to help me grow like I can talk to them in person so that's just something I'm learning how to address to it's it's a tough transition 
I feel like we should touch on the topic of like how to live after you commit. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you know when you're going through the process, like, oh, I know Christ now. Right. I'm about to commit, but you just don't. You still do stuff. Like, I'm gonna go ahead. And, you know, I'm gonna still smoke a little. I'm gonna still drink a little. I'm gonna still party or not. But then like you get to the point where you're like, all right, I want to be done, done, for real, for real. And then you do. And it's like, well, how do you now? enjoy life because you're so used to associating and enjoying yeah. life with those substances with those activities with like whatever look that looks like so like what does it look like to actually live life for christ that's not quote unquote boring because the typical st st uh, stereotype for a christian life is kind of kind of boring you know it's kind of dry you know so it's like <laughs> how, how do you make it not dry that's a legit question because i do not know the answer so so for me mm -hmm. i when I think about my social life in my early 20s, all I did was go to parties and drink. Facts. That's low key boring. Like, what else What else did I do? It wasn't boring. It wasn't boring <laughs> at the time. But what I'm saying is, like, there was not like a variety. Yeah, I feel you. Okay. Like, the location would change, mm -hmm. the crowd and the music would change, the scene would change, but like, we were still doing the same thing. Every weekend. Every single weekend. You might even throw a weekday in. Facts, couple cups. <laughs> <laughs> but so, for a hot second, and by a hot second, I would say a couple years. I would say a couple years that it um, it was hard to kind of figure out what that was. But then I just, honestly, I would use things like Meetup. Mm -hmm. I would use things That's like like Facebook. I would just find other ways to like fill my time. Mm -hmm. And if I felt like they were going like the party way i'd be like oh no that's not for me mm -hmm. go to museums go to art shows see but you can't like hit a museum every weekend no but i mean but i guess there's like so much variety so i guess so like in your case you're just out of school or not yeah. like your friend circle is back at school or they've dispersed everywhere yeah. and the, i don't know i don't know how long you've been out of school but how are you no but how, how how have you been able to find community? Or what do you think is gonna be the best way for you since you said that you haven't really found everything yeah. just yet? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, as you're bringing up the topic, I'm just thinking like, what are my personal interests? Like mm -hmm. I, um, I got a degree in graphic design, but I, I like drawing, I like art. So a museum might be something I'd wanna do not all the time, but just maybe invite somebody else that has an interest for like visuals and yeah. design. And like, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, the things that I enjoyed, um, even in my school setting, they were like just really just one on one conversations. So if mm -hmm. I can go with somebody that I feel safe with to talk to and they feel safe, safe to talk to me, like, I guess it really doesn't matter where we're going within mm -hmm. the context of the course. Like, we're talking about like after you're committing to Christ, so your interests will be different over mm -hmm. time. But yeah, I mean, one time I just took a ride with a friend, like we just went to Walmart and it was, Walmart is not like the place you go to socialize, <laughs> but with school and all this other things, all these other things going on, like that's probably, that was the time right. for me to interact with this person. Mm, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, so basically you, any type of space or environment where you're able to connect with someone in a yeah. one-on-one way. If I can, yeah. yeah. And I think right. part right. of it for like me is regular like, people can connect. You did. I was going there. I don't want to go in the mix, but that's, that's it. Yeah. You know? But like, I'm also an introverted person anyway, so I'm trying to remind myself, like, my comfort zone is to kind of isolate, mm -hmm. and I like to take time to self-reflect, and that's what I'm used to doing. Um, but I also realize if I want that community and I'm praying for that community, I kind of have to um, get out there. Get out there and also just be very specific. Like, well, God, what kind of people am I looking for? Mm -hmm. I want to maintain those friendships that I have. Um, but also, I recognize while I'm home, I need to be making sure that um, I'm still engaging with people around my age group now. So, mm -hmm. I feel you.
So because we didn't want this video to be too long, we're going to stop right here for today and we're going to continue next week with part two as we dive deeper into some of these topics. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when the next video goes live. Well, I want to thank you so much for watching and I want to remind you that you're only one prayer away. If you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe for more awesome content just like this. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye guys.